Okay, so in this video, we're going to be doing some great stuff, big gap and filler spray along the side right in there and probably in between back in there as well. And this is, as I said, big gap filler. So we're going to be filling some big gaps here. Actually, I think what I'm hoping this will do is it will expand a little bit more so I won't have to use as much product in spraying this. So once this is along the edge around there, it'll expand and this stuff takes eight hours to cure, it says on the back of it. But once it's done curing and expanded, I'll come back tomorrow with a razor blade, and slice that stuff down. And <clears throat> depending on how it ends up looking and forming, um, you may have to do a little, a lot of trimming or just a little trimming and then we'll put the, uh, some kind of a cloth paper mache, um, shaper sheet. We'll figure something out for that down in here. Um, not going to need to do that over here. Probably end the great stuff over here. Maybe cause this stuff here I can fill in with some plaster. So I'll probably do about over in here and then go all the way around. So I'm going to go all the way around here like so, and I'm going to go in between the two, the two foam pieces there, two risers, and I'm gonna keep going here, going here, going here, all the way down. And then the piece I've got to put right in here, I'm going to hang off doing that for the time being. I've got over there because what I need to do is even though I wasn't having a problem in my test run of the locomotive, um, what I need to do is because this stuff is going to continue going into an elevation. It, once it hits the uh, bridge, it's going to go in a sudden straight, straight across. It's not going to be going up anymore. So there's going to be that little bit of a bump right there as it transitions from a going up in elevation to just going straight across. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back a few inches on the piece that I need to put in back here. And I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to determine this yet. It'll probably be with some kind of measurements having to be taken. But nevertheless, what I'm going to do with this piece is I'm going to decide, first of all, do, is it going to work full length or am I going to have to cut it back? I've got enough clearance here in the bridge uh, that I can actually go back a few chunks here. So somewhere back in here, I'm going to have to start tapering this off to be level. And then for the bridge, of course, that means getting this perfectly flat, because if I don't, then the track's not going to be perfectly flat, and then we could have some issues. Um, some of that flatness could be taken care of with... Um, whatever top coat I decide to put on this, whether it be plaster, plaster cloth, duct tape, I don't know yet. But <clears throat> the, um, the, 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 the tapering off to a, to a level flat surface, I'm going to have to do on the other side as well. It's going to go from flat and then start tapering down over there. I, I didn't, like I said, I didn't have a problem with the way the locomotive and the rolling stock was running along this with that sudden abrupt leveling out. But I think in the long run, I really need to do that. And it'll probably look better as well to have at least a section of this that is actually, you know, somewhat flat and even to the, uh, the bridge for, a, for, a, you know, a couple car lengths at least. So that's what we're going to do uh, at some point in the future. But right now we're going to take this piece and we're just going to kind of move him off to the side like that. And we're going to just have our fun with the spray foam. This is a messy part, it can be a messy part, uh, but it's also a nice easy part to do as well. So we're going to, I've already shaken this up, but we're going to give it another shake anyway. Shake, 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 shake your booty. Shake your booty, shake your big gap filler, shake your big gap filler. Okay, so 
undo that. Where is, there's my little spigot there. Twist that on there like so. This doesn't have to be perfect. I would like to have some variation, but nevertheless, there we go. Oops. And some of that right there, let me get my something to point with here. Some of this here is going to end up getting shaved down as well so it's not such an abrupt uh, uh, drop off there there we go I got that part of it sprayed down so we'll go ahead and uh, do the outside here Hopefully this will work, because if it doesn't, I've already done this before on layout, so. I know that it works. It's just a matter of how it looks afterwards. And I don't know exactly how much of this I'm going to have to uh, apply, how much it's going to expand, but uh, we'll find out. In a couple hours, we'll start to see some expansion here. Okay, add a little bit more over here, okay. Okay, so this is the next day, and the foam is cured, or at least it should be cured. So let's go ahead and shave this down a little bit here. Of course, there's always stuff that's got to be in the way when you're trying to do this stuff. All right, let's go ahead and get this trimmed down over here. This stuff seems a little softer than I'm used to. It's been more than eight hours, so it should be... Uh, should be cured here. It doesn't feel goopy. Just do it in little sections like that so we don't get uh, too far ahead of ourselves here. I'll move that over a little bit. Try to 
cut that down to about the same level as the uh, riser without cutting into the riser as best as we can get it. Should have maybe went for the uh, stuff that said it was denser. That might have uh, that might have worked a little bit better for this. But that's kind of the general idea that I'm trying to get to right there. Just kind of cut it down a little bit there so that it uh, slopes back down to the ground at least there to some extent. We just need a rough, a rough thing. We don't need anything crazy because that'll, this will get trimmed down a little bit more and uh, filled in with some uh, um, shaper sheet, plaster, whatever right there. So it'll be good. Just have to sculpt it down into the, into the ground. Carving this stuff is really not too big of a deal. I've got most of it uh, carved here, but I want to do this last part just to show you how I'm doing this. Now on this particular side right here, I can't really get the knife this way. So I'm gonna have to come down this way from the top. And you can see over here where I've already done some along here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get in here and kind of go about the from where the bottom of the foam is here to about where the riser's edge is there. And we're just gonna cut it like that. It doesn't matter if it waves around, none of that matters. Because that's the nature of the beast is variation. Now, these chunks you could save for little hills if you wanted to, if they, if you thought they would come in handy, you can always glue those down with hot glue somewhere else on the layout. So we'll just go through here and cut this like that at kind of sort of an angle. Kind of bending that knife blade just a little bit while we're doing it. We get all the way back now. Some of this stuff I have to go in here and actually cut it from the base. So just don't go all the way through, just a little bit there. All the way across. I can pull that sucker right on out of there and there we go. So, could glue that right there. Hey, <laughs> probably not. Anyway, so got the general, the general shape carved in it. We can go back and kind of fine tune it a little bit here and there. Where we stopped there. So at this point we would put some shaper sheet across the top here. So let's say if I'm going to do shaper sheet across this whole thing, I'd probably drape it from here all the way down to about here. But putting this foam in gives it some support so we don't have to try to fill that in later with something like, I don't know, plaster. And we can stuff it with paper, obviously, too. But I'm just showing you the foam method here. How to do that. And then we can go back later, if we wanted to, add some variation. Now, one of the things I am doing here, too, is that um, the track is going to end up being pretty close to the edge on either side. I may finagle that a little bit to get it more closer to the center. but. It's still going to be fairly close to the edges, so I'm going to build this up a little bit here. And so that I've got just a little bit more over, overhang there. But it's a matter of perfecting it. That's why I got two cans. And let me take, show you uh, further down here what I've already done. So over here you can see this is where I already did the lower elevation here. And I've basically just cut it level just right across there with this, the riser here, and then I've got it angling down a little bit there. And then the same thing goes all back here too. Let me move that just a little bit there. You can see how I've got that going around there like so. And down here, 
like that and that's where we start going up i was expecting this stuff to to expand a little bit more than it did i'm you know when a can says large gaps and cracks i figured that there's going to be uh more expansion than the normal gap and crack stuff or window stuff but i don't think this really expanded any more than the regular stuff does but anyway this is where we're at so far So I've got this piece removed, as you can see, and I've got it propped up here so I can work on it a little bit easier. I'm going to do the back side of this now, get some spray foam back here. I know it probably doesn't show up on camera, but I've got a clear, I guess it kind of does, uh, some uh, packing tape right here that I've affixed to the back side of this. So when I spray the foam back here, it doesn't go blopping onto the floor, at least I hope not, it shouldn't. Um, even if it bulges out a little bit, it shouldn't start dripping down the floor. But just in case, I am going to put some stuff under the floor. So I need to fill in the spot right here with some foam. And then I need to fill in that spot down there as well. But I, I'll do that next. I haven't... Uh, <clears throat> i got to put some tape back there still. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of foam in here. Uh, maybe not. Eh, I don't know. Yeah, maybe not. I don't think I need to put any foam there. I do need to find, this is about a half inch difference from what I uh, measured. So I'm gonna have to find some foam <clears throat> that's half inch thick to fit in that area. Or maybe a piece of wood. I might use a piece of wood actually. I've got some sp scrap wood um, right back in there. As a matter of fact, I could cut and fit to here. But uh, just need to get some more foam on here. I've got this, uh, uh, formed right along in here and along through here as well so that's ready for uh, some sort of covering I'm going to probably use um, some sort of a uh, paper mache that I've got I've got a big bag of it the uh, they, they call it claycrete but uh, we'll, uh, that'll be another video. Um, right now I just need to finish doing the spray foam.
So I put some strips of packing tape along here and I also, as you just saw, scraped off some of the excess that was squeezed out. This is an interesting thing because you can actually, I don't have to try this a little bit further, but um, you can form the uh, foam with this tape. And I'm gonna have to trim it a little bit when I uh, once it's dry. But uh, this might be a pretty interesting way to uh, form this stuff without having to cut it or at least uh, saving a little bit of cutting because uh, you've already basically got the general shape there. Um, but anyway, I'm going to let this set up uh, being under the tape uh, here. It's going to probably take a longer to set up in here than it normally would. I can actually push some of that out if I want to. But uh, it'll expand and kind of itself out. So um, yeah, we'll just let that sit and uh, I'm gonna do that little chunk over yonder there and get that done. And uh, we'll come back at some point when this is uh, ready to be uh, shaped. Okay, so the foam is dry. And I'm gonna pull the tape off here. Let's see if it's actually been coming off. Yeah. Yeah, not terribly easy to get off, but not impossible either. I think there's a little bit under here, it's still moist. That's kind of surprising. Given 24 hours of time here, I would have figured that that would have been uh, cured by now, but there we go. Hmm. Might use packing, t um, masking painter's tape uh, for this next time. I don't know this. Uh, <laughs> this uh, packing tape is awfully sticky with this this stuff on here. Okay, so this is day three, part three, which you don't know because I just told, well, I only told you know now because I told you. This is the third video clip of the series here. It's going to be edited into one video. Third day, the foam is finally cured. And I cut it on the back side there with the razor blade. Of course, I'm on the wrong side of the thing to really show you here, but trust me, it's cut. Now let me do the uh, drone shot there. Let's see if I can get the camera back there with the uh, on the monopod here. So I went and cut all that up basically flat so it should be hopefully not an issue when it goes up against the door again there. Okay, let me put you back on the floor here. All right, so. So for this project, there have been two cans of Great Stuff foam used. One is the, the red can, which I used for the back here, in the previous clip, and the other one was that black can of large gap and crack. Um, this stuff, I think I dislike the, the, the most of the two. I'm going to compare it to the blue stuff. I've used the blue and the red before, and I couldn't remember which one I liked better. But this stuff only expands, at least it says up for up to one inch there. So that's why I kind of used it back here, because I figured it would be lower expansion than the blue stuff. But this stuff seems to be a little bit harder to cut, and for whatever reason it took longer to set up. Now that's probably, I guess, because of the tape. I don't know. I, Never tried putting tape on there to hold it together but so it didn't drip on the floor. But anyway, uh, even dried, I found this stuff to be a little bit more difficult to cut. This stuff here was the large gap and crack stuff, and I found this to be extremely easy to cut. So I don't know. I guess it's called density, foam density. I don't know. The, the knife just slipped through that really nice and easy, where the other one I really had to kind of like, you know, get in there and da -da 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 across there. 
Nevertheless, we got it done. So the the road highway, not gonna be interstate, but it's uh, done as far as the base goes. And uh, this part of it here is done too. Um, or it will be when I clean this little bit of foam right here that I see sticking up. And you always want to start cutting this foam with a, uh, a new razor blade. It just makes life so much easier. Uh, I need to angle this a little bit better here too. I don't like the way that's looking. And just kind of get up under there a little bit. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I probably didn't need to do that, but I'm being picky here. So next step I'm going to do, which will be the next video, is we're going to start laying some plaster on this thing. Um, but the last step I want to do in this video is, and this is not you know, showing you how to do all of this and, and the entire layout all in one video. This is just this particular section showing you how I'm going about doing this. So what I did along here was I went and used this rasp and this is a $4.50 rasp from Menards and uh, they do sell uh, replacement, uh, I guess you'd call it blades, plates, whatever there for this thing. So that's always good. Um, and that's what I used to uh, shape this a little bit around here. Now this does build up quite a bit of foam bits. Thankfully most of them stay collected inside of here. So let me turn this thing around here. So on this side I'm going to show you real quick here how I'm going to use this. And this side's not going to really matter a whole lot because this is going to be up against the door. But I'm just going to show you for reference anyway. And so you can go either way on this front, forwards or backwards. And it smooths even this stuff out pretty well. So like I did over here, I've got a, a, a bevel there to slope down to simulate the, the hillside falling down into the, the base here. This is probably gonna be more of a, a cut out, a grind out of the hill, so to speak, I guess, when, when they were putting in the railroad tracks here. They had to come with some big equipment and grind the side of this, of this hill as it was coming down here so they could lay the tracks. So I'm gonna simulate that with some cloth later, but. To get the base of it, you know, I did that slope there all the way down, and that's basically what I did with this. I cut it first with the knife at an angle, and then I went over it with this to kind of smooth it out in the corners a little bit, like right about in here. Go across here. And you can see how much crap that picks up, and a lot of it goes inside there when you're doing a lot of it. But for the back side here, I'm just gonna work on the spray foam. Okay, so gradually we can shape it to whatever we want to. I'm just trying to flatten it and get it some leveled out there. And so I'm gonna go over the edges a little bit here with the rasp. Okay, so then if, if I had some foam, well I do actually have some foam right here. So I got a little bit right there too. So what I wanna do just to smooth this out, I'm just going to run the rasp over this real quick. I, I've used a knife to do this too, but I got a little bit of a bump there I'm, I missed. So let's go ahead and clean that up. And then this way will ensure that this is all level through here. I'm not trying to dig too much into the white foam because that's going to make a big nasty mess. But I just want to get anything sticking up 
level down to the top of the white foam. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. So the next step I would do here is to pick anything up that, uh, oh, here's a piece of tape I just got off of there. Um, pick anything large off of here, which seems to be just tape right now. So this white foam gets everywhere. You'd think Woodland Sinks would use a better quality foam for their stuff, as much as they charge for these risers. Um, so I'm going to vacuum this up, and we're not going to show that because you don't need to hear me vacuuming, but that's essentially how I'm going to form the stuff on the layout while I'm doing these risers. And uh, this is just kind of a demonstration of purpose for the video. What I'm doing on this particular section, since it is removable, I can do this nice and easy uh, for the video. Now on the layout itself, right up there, that part of it, I'm not going to be able to get to the back side. But where the window is, I'm going to put a little bit of a backdrop across the window anyway up against that. So it won't be a big deal anyway. But since this is a pop-out piece and I can get to it, I can do a little bit of a rough a rough uh, shaping and painting and maybe a little bit of plaster cloth back here uh, if I have any extra left. But this isn't really all that important to put plaster cloth on because you're not going to see it. So why waste plaster cloth on, <laughs> on that? But um... So anyway, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. And... Uh... I guess I could say like, share, and subscribe to this channel, but everyone else on YouTube does that, and I think anybody watching this video would already do that if they wanted to. So, But if you do, I, would always, I as always, would appreciate it. And I thank you for, for watching this video. So peace out, everybody, and we'll see you again on right here on vlog number four with the foam risers. Cutting out the foam, spray foam, and all that stuff. It's not everyone's cup of tea to do it this way. It's just the way I happen to like doing it. So, take care. Peace out.